Welcome to our channel. Civil Engineering Basics. For more videos please subscribe, Civil Engineering Basics. Hello friends. This is the part 3 of requirements of building parts video. Let's start. In this lecture we will discuss about building parts and its requirements. Building parts are plinth, habitable rooms, kitchen, bathrooms and water closets, ledge or and slash loft, mezzanine floor, storeroom, garage, basement, chimneys, parapet, boundary wall, septic tank, office come letter box room, meter room, Staircase slash exit requirements. Roof. We will see requirements of boundary wall. First requirement of boundary wall is maximum height of the compound wall shall be 1.5 meter above the center line of the front street. Compound wall up to 2.4 meter height may be permitted if the top 0.9 meter is of open type construction of a design to be approved by the authority. Second requirement of boundary wall is, in the case of a corner plot, the height of the boundary wall shall be restricted to 0.75 meter for a length of 10 meter on the front and side of the intersections and the balance height of 0.75 meter if required in accordance with the first requirement, may be made up of open type construction, through railings, and of design to be approved by the authority. Let's see the other requirements of boundary wall. However, the provisions of first requirement and second requirement are not applicable to boundary walls of jails. In industrial buildings, electric substations, transformer stations, institutional buildings like sanatoria, hospitals, industrial buildings like workshops, factories and educational buildings like schools, colleges, including hostels, and other uses of public utility undertakings and strategically sensitive buildings, a height up to 2.4 meter may be permitted by the authority. Now we will see the requirements of septic tank. First of all let's discuss location requirement of septic tank. A subsoil dispersion system shall not be closer than 18 meter from any source of drinking water, such as well, to mitigate the possibility of bacterial pollution of water supply. It shall also be as far removed from the nearest habitable building as economically feasible but not closer than 6 meter, to avoid damage to the structures. Let's discuss the dimensions requirement of septic tank. Dimensions of septic tanks. Septic tanks shall have a minimum width of 750 mm, a minimum depth of 1 m below the water level and a minimum liquid capacity of 1 cubic meter. The length of tanks shall be 2 to 4 times the width. IS 2470 Part 1 1985 Code of Practice for Installation of Septic Tank, Design Criteria and Construction, Second Revision, Used to Design Septic Tank. Let's discuss the other requirement of septic tank. Septic tanks may be constructed of brickwork, stone masonry, concrete or other suitable materials as approved by the authority. Under no circumstances shall effluent from a septic tank be allowed into an open channel drain or body of water without adequate treatment. The gradients of land drains, 
under drainage as well as the bottom of dispersion trenches and soakways shall be between 1 to 300 and 1 to 400. The minimum nominal diameter of the pipe shall be 100 mm. Further, at junctions of pipes in manholes, direction of flow from a branch connection shall not make an angle exceeding 45 degrees with the direction of flow in main pipe. Every septic tank shall be provided with ventilating pipe of at least 50 mm diameter. The top of the pipe shall be provided with a suitable cage of mosquito-proof wire mesh. The ventilating pipe shall extend to a height which would cause no smell nuisance to any building in the area. Generally, the ventilating pipe may extend to a height of about 2 meter, when the septic tank is at least 15 meter away from the nearest building and to a height of 2 meter above the top of the building when it is located closer than 15. Requirements of septic tank When effluence from septic tank is disposed of into seepage pit is When the disposal of septic tank effluent is to a seepage pit, the seepage pit may be of any suitable shape with the least cross-sectional dimension of 0.90 m and not less than 1.00 m in depth below the invert level of the inlet pipe. The pit may be lined with stone brick or concrete blocks with dry open joints which should be backed with at least 75 mm of clean coarse aggregate. The lining above the inlet level should be finished with mortar. In the case of pits of large dimensions, the top portion may be narrowed to reduce the size of the RCC cover slabs. Where no lining is used, especially near trees, the entire pit should be filled with loose stones. A masonry ring may be constructed at the top of the pit to prevent damage by flooding of the pit by surface runoff. The inlet pipe may be taken down a depth of 0.90 meter from the top as an anti-mosquito measure. Requirements of septic tank When effluence from septic tank is disposed of into trenches. When the disposal of the septic tank effluent is to a dispersion trench, the dispersion trench shall be 0.50 m to 1.00 m deep and 0.30 m 1.00 m wide excavated to a slight gradient and shall be provided with 150 mm to 250 mm of washed gravel or crushed stones. Open jointed pipes placed inside the trench shall be made of unglazed earthenware clay or concrete and shall have a minimum internal diameter of 75 mm to 100 mm. Each dispersion trench shall not be longer than 30 m and trenches shall not be placed closer than 1.8 m. Now we will see the requirements of office come letter box room. In the case of multi-storied multi-family dwelling apartments constructed by existing and proposed cooperative housing societies or apartment owners associations, limited companies and proposed societies, an office come letter box room of dimension 3.6 meter times 3 meter shall be provided on the ground floor. In case the number of flats is more than 20, the maximum size of the office come letter box room shall be 20 square meter. In business building provision shall be made for letter boxes on the entrance floor as per the requirements of the postal department. Now we will see the requirements of meter box. For all buildings above 15 meter in height and in special occupancies, like educational, 
assembly, institutional, industrial, storage, hazardous and mixed occupancies with any of the aforesaid occupancies having area more than 500 square meter on each floor, provision shall be made for an independent and ventilated meter, service, room, as per requirements of electric, service, supply undertakings on the ground floor with direct access from outside for the purpose of termination of electric supply from the licensee's service and alternative supply cables. The door, doors provided for the service room shall have fire resistance of not less than two hours. Now we will see the requirements of staircase, exit requirements. First of all let's see the minimum width requirement. The minimum width of staircase shall be as follows. In residential building, 1.0 meter. Note, for row housing with two stories, the minimum width shall be 0.75 meter. In residential hotel building, 1.5 meter. In assembly building like auditorium, theater, and cinemas, 2.0 meter. In educational building, 1.5 meter. In institutional building, 2.0 meter and. In all other building, 1.5 meter width of staircase is required. Now let's see the minimum tread requirement of staircase. The minimum width of tread without nosing shall be 250 mm for residential buildings. The minimum width of tread for other buildings shall be 300 mm. Now let's see the maximum riser requirement of staircase. The maximum height of riser shall be 190 mm for residential buildings and 150 mm for other buildings and these shall be limited to 12 per flight. Now let's see the minimum headroom requirement of staircase. The minimum headroom in a passage under the landing of a staircase shall be 2.2 meter. The minimum clear headroom in any staircase shall be 2.2 meter. Now let's see the exit requirement in staircase. All aspects of exit requirements for corridors, doors, staircases, ramps, etc. in respect of widths, travel distance shall be as per fire and life safety rules and regulations. Now we will see the requirements of roof. The roof of a building shall be so designed and constructed as to effectively drain water by means of sufficient rainwater pipes of adequate size, wherever required, so arranged, jointed and fixed as to ensure that the rainwater is carried away from the building without causing dampness in any part of the walls, roof or foundations of the building or an adjacent building. Other requirement of roof is. The authority may require rainwater pipes to be connected to a drain or sewer to a covered channel formed beneath the public footpath to connect the rainwater pipe to the road gutter or in any other approved manner. Rainwater pipes shall be affixed to the outside of the external walls of the building or in recesses or chases cut or formed in such external walls or in such other manner as may be approved by the authority. Thank you so much for viewing this video. For more video on civil engineering subscribe my channel. Civil Engineering Basics